So I thought, Freddie Mac home loans? Wow, when did we start originating loans? No, you guys are all of our clients. Now let me tell you, I am so fortunate to be here. I flew in from St. Louis, Missouri yesterday and oh my gosh, it was a high of 33 degrees out there. And I'm from Cali, so I was like, what? No, San Diego, get me to San Diego. Well, let me tell you another reason I'm super fortunate to be here is, uh, let's see here, Mateen got you all pumped up. Danny told you kind of like new ways for you to grow your business. Now I'm gonna educate you on the borrower of the future. Now in 2020, during the COVID pandemic, because I'm a keynote speaker for Freddie Mac, um, all of a sudden I was involved in a ton of very impactful studies. Now, if you know anything about us, we love studies. You're gonna hear all about these studies I was involved in. So first things first, who am I, what do I do? I'm a subject matter expert on affordability. Where is it affordable? Okay, we'll talk about that. Um, subject matter expert on age demographic, minority demographics. Why? 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 Because that's your borrower. That's your borrower that's coming to the housing table and is here. So with that, let's start a little bit on macroeconomy. So I got a lot of requests as I'm doing these keynotes all across the country. Nora, can you give us a forecast? What is going on uh, in 2023, a lot of you are actually business planning and kudos to you, I think that's fascinating, let's do it. I'm gonna really give you kind of like the big housing industry forecast. Number one, it's purchase business and that's all you need to know. That was easy, right? Cool, that was an easy forecast. Sam Cater, uh, over our senior chief economist, um, I was talking to him the other day and I said, Sam, $1.9 trillion? in purchase business, my gosh, that sounds kind of conservative. He goes, you know, Nora, keep it there. We're really projecting about $2.5 trillion. Now, we're gonna go back a little bit and we have some historical numbers. Now, let me tell you why these historical numbers are important for you, important for your conversations. We've got brokers, we have loan originators here, we have support staff. You need to know how to identify your next borrower. Okay, and I'm really gonna get a little granular with the borrower because you need to better understand the different demographic of borrower that is coming and it's not the same. I started my career as a subprime underwriter underwriting loans at 19% with the three year prepay at $10,000. And that's before Tilla Rispa. Borrowers used to call me and thank me for the 19% interest rate. And Danny is absolutely right. That borrower used to come back and refinance three or four times, and that's called cyclical housing economy. Okay, so for those of you that are new to our industry, welcome. You had one phenomenal year, two phenomenal years according to this, $4.8 trillion worth of housing industry business is historical. Historical, so a lot of these young millennials, by the way, I'm a subject matter expert on age demographic. Millennials, raise your hand because I'm gonna pick on you. Yep, raise your hand. Any millenn- okay, we've got one. Good, oh good. <laughs> Our housing industry is thriving, I see, perfect. So, these millennials are saying, no thanks, I'm not interested in purchasing for a very long time, but guess what? They are no longer thinking that. A lot of things actually are impacting their, their way of coming to the housing table, and one of them we're gonna talk about is a new housing trend. Now, as part of another subject matter expert kind of like a new way of doing business that we're looking at, and it's migration. I can't say this enough. I just presented with my friend and colleague, Dr. Jessica Louts over at NAR. She's a behavioral economist. Behavioral economist, I like it. So, NAR is now telling realtors, get out of your little 17 zip code farm areas. Why? Remote work. Remote work is impacting us in the housing industry and we're not speaking on it enough, why? Well, I need to tell you, brokers, originators, one of the biggest valuable conversations you're gonna have with your borrower is asking, by the way, are you a remote employee? Are you going to be a remote employee? Why? Because a lot of you have a ton of borrowers that are pre-qualified and keep saying, I, don't, I can't find a home, I don't qualify, I don't find a home, I can't find a home in these 17 zip codes. Remote work is on the rise. I'm doing a study right now called Zoom Towns. So millennials flock to coastal cities and what we have seen is that a lot of these millennials 
are now requesting remote work or quitting their jobs and going to remote work because they are migrating inward. Now, there's two things happening here, and it's a migration out of urban, out of suburban, and into rural. 11.9% uptick on rural purchases. So that's one. Number two is outbound migration. They're leaving states such as California. 348,000 household migrations migrated out in 2021. We are almost at that number as of now. We're projecting a little more migration out. Why? Number one, affordability. No longer is amazing weather a reason to stay in California or some of our other coastal states. It's affordability. And guess what? Rural locations and the Midwest actually have inventory. Who knew? I did say something at a huge convention earlier because I'm following Idaho. Idaho has a 37% housing appreciation six months, January to June. And I said, what's in Idaho? And she raised her hand from far away and she said, I'm in Idaho. So I won't pick on Idaho today, okay? All right, so this is a really fantastic heat map that really shows you my study. It shows you all these outbound state and inbound states. Now, you guys, I can't tell you enough. What does your borrower look like? Number one, they're migrating. Number two, possibly a remote employee. Now, remote employee, fascinating. Sometimes their gig economy, we'll talk about that in a minute. Sometimes they're just consultants. We'll talk about that in a minute. But sometimes nobody is asking the valuable question and they're sitting with these pre-approvals saying, my agent can't get me into a home. Now, how many agents would be so excited if they heard you already prepare the borrower? Oh, wow, you're a remote employee? I'm gonna absolutely let your agent know that. Hang on, that changes the game. Are you willing to migrate out? Now, here in California, we're seeing so many pockets of affordability. Believe it or not, yes, there are pockets of affordability here in California. And it used to be called rural. We're now holding hand in hand, we're called landlocked so much. Um, if you're here in Southern California, right now, a location that I'm actually very fascinated by and I'm studying is Coachella Valley. Guess what? Disney just broke ground. Housing appreciation, 62% the day they broke ground. 62%. That is fascinating and that proves our study. Now, let's talk about some macro and micro trends. You guys, I was in St. Louis. Someone walks up to me and says, Freddie Mac, what happened with the interest rates? Oh, me? Freddie Mac? Yeah, we've only been tracking interest rates for the entire housing industry since 1970. We don't set the interest rates. Someone needed to tell him that. However, let's talk about interest rates for a quick minute. I told you I started my career as a subprime underwriter. And something we used to say back then is, you're married to the property, you are dating the interest rate. If that's new to you, share it, okay? We need to educate our future home buyers on historical average interest rates. I'm a Gen Xer, guess what? My age demographic bought homes at what average age? What do you guys think? You guys are the experts, you educate me. Ooh, someone said it, 20. It's actually 26, but you're close and you just saw me present. I love it. Yeah, 26. Gen X, 26, guess what? Heavy credit card users. V interest rates, seven and a half. Average, the entire time we were purchasing homes. Guess what? Double the student loan debt we have now. Why were we so successful? Because nobody ever told us we couldn't buy a home with bad, with bad credit, with high interest rates, and with student loan debt. And guess what? All we did was fix it. We fixed our credit. We found down payment money. We didn't know about student loan debt. I'll talk about that in a minute. Why, did, why were we double, double on student loan debt? Okay, so interest rates, back to interest rates. Now, I also landed somewhere else and someone said, the housing industry has just crashed. So I opened up my portfolio and I made sure we had just bought billions of dollars worth of loans. So I'm like, okay, we didn't crash while well, my plane landed. Um, but someone else said, Nora, what is gonna happen? And I kept saying, I mean, are you not, an industry professional, are you not listening to the feds? Like the feds told us for almost a year and a half, we're gonna raise interest rates, we're gonna raise interest rates, we're gonna raise interest rates. Most of you 
are probably prepared for this, and most of our new housing industry professionals were not. So please don't be shocked by this. But I'd rather give you the education and information where you can educate these future buyers. This is the economy. If you did not pull the trigger on April 2021 with the lowest interest rate in history, housing history of 2.35, if you did not fund, record, make that first mortgage payment that month after, you were never ready to buy because that was the best interest rate they were ever going to get. Probably, economists are saying, we'll ever have during a world pandemic. So that's our interest rate conversation. We're done with that. Let's talk about housing appreciation. So during my study, a lot of these millennials, what we uncovered, oh boy, you guys are going to love this. They're not financially literate. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't shocked either, don't worry. But hold on, let me tell you all about it. You're gonna love this. So I said, my first question was, okay, so tell me how you invest your money. Bitcoin and crypto. I almost fell off my chair, but I turned around, looked at my Freddie Mac colleagues, and they were terrified. Oh, okay, and I said, well, I have a question. If I can tell you how to invest your money and give you a rate of return of, okay, this says 17, but at the time it was 18.6%, would you invest? Well, can I tell you, they got up off their seats and they were like, tell us, what is it? I don't understand. And I said, housing, January to December average at the time, 18.6%. Why are you impressed? Why don't you know this? You're so educated. And they were shocked. But remember Idaho? 37% in six months. Remember Coachella Valley? Nine months, 62% in different pockets across America. But can I tell you, California, wow, we really, we're amazing when it comes to housing appreciation. And it's also something you call, it's unaffordable. However, however, the formula is to find pockets of affordability. And millennials got smart at us because they are purchasing homes in rural locations. Now, let's talk about these infamous millennials. All right, you guys, well, guess what? They are the most educated with degree cohort in the history of America. I love it. I speak at universities across America and do financial literacy for graduates. And guess what? They are holding offer letters upwards of $150,000 to $250,000 at graduation. Yep, absolutely. I just spoke at U of H two weeks ago. And they're out earning every other age demographic. Why do you need to know that? You're qualifying them. When they find out their earning power, they are gonna to come to the housing table rather quickly. Why? Well, guess what? Most of them are historical renters. Mom and dad rented, grandma and grandpa rented, and they're scared to death about coming to the housing table because they are not financially literate. And Google doesn't give them the intricacies of nuance of purchasing a home all the way to post close. They can't figure it out, but they need you. And I'm gonna tell you how to grow your business. Okay. Let's have the student loan debt conversation. I love it. During my study, a lot of these millennials said, I can't buy a home. Mom and dad said, I have student loan debt. OK, so I said, how much do you have? And everybody raised their hand. 100% of people in my study raised their hand. Well, guess what? I said, cool, let's pull your credit report and see how much you have. And then about 60% lowered their hand. They don't have student, not 100% of them have student loan debt. So how many do? Well, only 32% of millennials actually carry student loan debt, only to 32%. The way that they have shuttered out the housing industry from purchasing a home is by saying, I have student loan debt. No, thank you. I'm not interested in purchasing. Now, how much student loan debt do they actually carry? $501 billion. And before that number even impresses you, Gen X, we had twice that. Why? Well, these amazing companies called DeVry, we're giving us two-year degrees for $100,000. I thank God my parents wouldn't let me sign up for that. Just kidding. A lot of people took advantage of that, and they started accumulating a ton of student loan debt in my age cohort. Now, on average, we're a ton of originators in here. A lot of you are qualifying borrowers. I went even further, so I quantified three items for you. Number one, how much do they carry on average? $34,000. It's not as impactful as they make it seem. However, they don't carry a lot of student loan debt. I'm sorry, they don't carry a lot of credit card debt. So student loan debt is their big catalyst. It's their big, biggest debt, and it feels burdensome to them. And 
We're gonna quantify this even further. I used Navient's calculation on a higher payment, 393, on a lower 222. What does that impact the DTI? 5.5%. It can make or break some deals, not all of them, but can I tell you when I showed this calculation to millennials, they were like, what? No, oh my gosh. Yeah, okay, so showing you these numbers really helps you open up the conversation as you're qualifying these millennials, and they say, no thanks, I have student loan debt. By the way, Freddie Mac calculates student loan debt with such a pop positive calculation of 0.5 versus my red-headed friends across the river, Fannie Mae. <laughs> FHA loved it so much, Marsha, my friend over at FHA, actually changed the calculation. They now mirror Freddie Mac's 0.5. Okay, so I mentioned millennials are out earning every other age demographic. Why is this important to you? Because a lot of us have actually told millennials, let's just scoot them to the side. They're not interested in purchasing, but they are. The millennial age, um, the millennial demographic is 71.1 million. 50 million are coming to the housing table in the next 13 years. 27 million are coming in the next five years. You need to know what this borrower looks like. You need to know how they shop. You need to know what their biggest concerns are. This is your borrower. I don't see them. I only torture them during studies. You get to qualify them. Fun. Okay, so let's talk about gig economy. Now, can I tell you, I have this conversation at Freddie Mac all the time because I used to be an underwriter. I was once an originator. I was also a regional sales manager. So I really get the primary market a lot. And I get to talk to my friends on the secondary market, especially my friends in credit risk who are always pushing back on me saying, no, Nora, stop. Well, guess what? Um, I co-authored two brand new housing policies that are gonna hit 2023 for Freddie Mac and they listened, gig economy. Not only is it here to say, you guys, I'm in Ubers um, or Uber Eats. There's a ton of boomers that are, that are using gig economy. They are retired, they get their retirement uh, checks, but guess what? They are also consultants and they are earning a ton of money consulting. You need to know how to qualify them and I need to tell my friends at Freddie Mac, we need to do a better job of qualifying gig economy. I promise I'm working on that. Okay, so most of you are probably saying, oh, millennials are coming, they're not here yet. Oh yes, they are. 52% of my portfolio, first time home buyers are millennials. If any of you are taking picture, pictures, I'm actually wanting to give you this entire data. I want you to run to every single one of your big agent offices and I want you to present my data. Okay, so I heard Danny talk about social media. This is really important. Millennials want you to know this and I'm gonna share it. Okay, so I quantified all this information with my data analyst and I said, millennials, where do you flock to to learn about mortgage loans and the finance industry? How are you gonna do this home transaction? So the first thing they said is they go to family. Oh God, I almost died. Um, guess what, grandma and grandpa are telling them they need 30% down. And mom, are, mom and dad are saying, no, no, you need 20% down. Get in with 20. That's how you get in. Nope. Guess what? It was all really bad information. Only 5% knew that there are loans out there less than 5%. And they just kept saying 5%, just the little small pocket. So family is giving bad information. Number two, guess what? And I was a little disappointed. They don't come to you. You guys are the experts. You know the programs. You know how to qualify them. They go to agents. They go to agents, they go to realtors. I'm working with NAR on this right now, a big study. Why are they going to agents? Why, you guys are the experts. Well, they don't know what, who does what, but the agents are all over social media. And my lenders are not. So I need to talk to you about that because I have my next slide. Okay, so they go to family, they go to real estate websites, then they go to the actual realtors. Then they go to social media. Now. I quantified it a little further. When they go to the realtors, it's realtor websites. They're on Instagram, they're on Facebook, they're on YouTube, they're on TikTok. Okay, well, for those of you that are spending money on social media, I have just given you a golden nugget. This is it. This is where they go to. This is all the websites, I'm sorry, these are the social media platforms where they mostly wanna see this. And listen, forget, I, I do have to say this, I'm on Facebook too, so is my mom and my grandma. Latinos, you know what I mean? But YouTube is blowing up, okay? And 
Next to YouTube, a little bit of Instagram. Yep, still hot. But let me tell you, I am following 21 accounts on TikToks of lenders that are crushing it in three minute videos, educating millennials on purchasing a home. And I'm sharing it with my executive senior leaders. I was just with them last night. They flew in to see me. Um, I'm presenting over at Aria, but they were fascinated. We are fascinated by lenders who are actually hosting home buyer three minute events on TikTok. And if you want to really impress them, go on YouTube. They are going 100% on YouTube. They go to YouTube to learn. So do I, actually. OK, so Freddie Mac created something else called the mortgage ready population. Now, most of you are like, wow, they earn a lot of money, Nora said. Wow, they're so educated. What's going on? Well, guess what? We used our 13 data sets and private portfolio and created an algorithm. This algorithm actually educated us that there are 41.1 mortgage-ready millennials renting in America. You guys, if you don't speak to them, your competitor will. I promise you that. I'm going all over the country. I've covered 31 states on this exact data. There's a mortgage-ready population. Now, what constitutes mortgage-ready? Credit worthiness, FICO above 661, debt to income ratio less than 25% no adverse credit, they've been working for the last two years, and guess what? They have some type of reserves to put down as a down payment. Okay, now, how can Freddie Mac help? Well, guess what? We're in San Diego, and everybody tells me here, ooh, it's not affordable. Okay, I get it, but guess what? Last Saturday, I was with the city of San Diego, Berkshire Hathaway, probably 15 of our clients, and 120 first-time homebuyer families that showed up to get pre-qualified. And we found 17 zip codes in San Diego that are affordable that qualify for Home Possible. But let me tell you even further, my, my colleague from NAR was there. And what she is saying is, please, Nora, tell every single, once, every single one of your audience members, down payment is on the rise, my friends. They're back. OK, sellers are willing to see down payment assistance programs as some of your offer letters. It is back, especially in San Diego for some reason, but it's back across the country. We are really seeing that. I worked with, um, I actually co-presented with the city of San Diego who's giving 140,000 out per borrower that qualifies, okay? So home possible, doesn't have to be a first time home buyer, can be a repeat borrower, geography and income restrictions. Now let me show you something super cool. OK, I don't expect you to know my AMI limits, but you know what? Congress and Senate wants me to tell you that they thank you for all those letters you wrote them about the AMI limits. They received them. No? You didn't write them? OK, but guess what? Millennials who can't afford homes did. And there was an uptick of 23% on AMI limits. So you're going to go to this website. It's free, by the way. Um, and if you're wondering, wow, I don't use this. Yeah, we know. Freddie Mac, yes, we know. Guess who does, though? First time home buyers that are looking for homes that are affordable, yep, they're all over here. They grab the MLS listing, they drop it into the search engine, and then guess what? They double click on that blue beautiful line and it takes them to every down payment assistance resource available for that address. And guess what? When they're out of funds, we report it every 48 hours. And this is a free tool for you. Show that to your agent and I bet you'll build a relationship. Okay, I'm gonna go fast. I'm gonna get the hook in a minute. All right. For the rest of the entire world that is not uh, geography and income restriction, we have Home One, true first time home buyer uh, uh, purchase program, 3% down. It's still a really fantastic prog program. Now, I never upsell from FHA, but Marcia Fudge, FHA Secret Secretary, Deputy Director, asked me to tell you not every first time home buyer needs to get thrown into an FHA loan, please. Millennials are begging you to give them options. If they qualify for a conventional, they can actually appreciate their equity much faster and they can close generational wealth and I'm very passionate about that, so please help me. Next, we're gonna talk about how I can help you. You love my data, you love my studies, yes? yes. Okay, thank gosh. Okay, I'm, guys, I'm done. All right, well, I want you to double click on this presentation when you get it and guess what? You want to do social media? Cool. I want to give you all my data. OK, so you're going to double click on the bottom. You're going to opt in for all the data that you want or all the studies. It all has to do with you because you're all my clients. Next, Credit Smart. 
you guys, financial literacy is needed. I need you to do more home buyer seminar shops with your favorite agents, and please educate these millennials, and that's how you're gonna build a, uh, build a book of business. Average, um, during my, my study, survey said they would refer seven of their friends, colleagues, brothers, cousins, everybody, over to you if you help them. Okay, now, one more thing. I have 26 modules on credit education in six languages. There's no excuse for them not to know credit. We've translated in six languages. This is the biggest nugget. Take a picture of it, seriously. Okay, those of you structuring loans, do not wait or ask your underwriter, why don't I have an accept, accept? Nope, 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 nope. Okay, I want you to call 1-800-FREDDY. We work East Coast hours, and you're gonna talk to one of my underwriters that are on standby, and you're going to give them the LPA run on the top right-hand side of your decision, and, you, and they're going to go through and tell you why you don't qualify, what happened, and they'll help you restructure. They'll actually help you structure an entire loan together. With that, I thank you. You are the critical link, and Freddie Mac thanks you for your business.